Okay, so I am um, just going to give you guys a little bit of information on um, a project which is looking at the adaptability indexing of um, apple and pear cultivars in diverse South African growing regions. Um, the researchers that are doing the trial, it's Esme, Dr. Esme Lowe, Dr. Ivan Labaskashny, and then um, the collaborators, it's uh, Dr. Nigel Cook, who's busy doing the technical advisory work on the project, and then um, Dr. Marty Buesa is busy with the... Um, the stats analysis and she's working at the RLC. Um, so basically, currently the way that um, genotypes are um, chosen or um, an area is chosen for them to plant is by looking at the, um, the area, chilling and then uh, correlating that or putting it together with a genotype that has a specific uh, chilling requirement. And although that is a good start, um, you can imagine um, we've got quite diverse growing regions where we plant most of our apple and pears. Um, and so in those areas, I mean, there's a lot of mountainous um, terrain, for instance, you've got a lot of microclimates. So we do see um, mull adaptability of, of varieties, even mm -hmm. though they might be planted in an area that has, for instance, sufficient chilling. Um, the consequences of, of poor adaptability, there's just some examples on the screen. So um, most left picture, you've got um, what is known as Karlnicke or bear wood. Um, so that is just the inability of the genotypes to produce side shoots. You would obviously then struggle to fill your space. Um, so you would not be using your space as efficiently as you could be. Um, then we've also got issues with flowering. Um, so poor flowering, uh, as you can see top right. Um, and that will obviously have consequences in terms of your fruit set, as well as your um, the uh, um, size of your fruit as well uh, at harvest, which you can see in the bottom right. Um, so basically, the reason for the project uh, is to try and explore um, from a plant perspective um, ways which we can determine adaptability. So further than just weather conditions and area or chill requirement. Um, background, this is just for the apples, but we've also got pears as well. So we've chosen 10 uh, genotypes and they range from low chilling to high chilling. The pears, it's a little bit more difficult in terms of chilling, but they range from early flowering to later flowering. Um, the apples are all budded on M7 rootstocks. The pears are all on BP1. Um, the apples were established in 2019, and the pears came on a little bit later, 2022. Um, and basically what we are doing is that we are looking at these 10 uh, genotypes in three different environments, specifically looking at phenology, as well as vegetative and reproductive growth. Um, we have these as I said, planted in three different environments, and then we compare the performance of these genotypes in the three different environments, and we look at what is known as genotype by environment interaction, uh, or GEI, um, and then we see how well these genotypes are adapted, uh, looking at the performance and stability. So how do they perform in certain environments, and how stable is that performance across environments? Um, that allows us to uh, see whether or not there are certain genotypes that are specifically adapted to certain environmental conditions or are there genotypes that are more uh, adapted across environments. Um, the idea is that we can use this information uh, to identify indicators of adaptability. So that is at a plant level. Um, are there things which we can specifically measure um, that are going to give us uh, indications of whether or not a genotype is going to be adapted um, in the future. So, with the range of genotypes that have been suggest or that have been chosen, the idea is that when new genotypes come uh, onto or into the country, uh, that we can slot them into this range, uh, and then we'll know what to measure um, in order to give us answers a bit quicker. There are currently three MSc students and a PhD student that's going to come at the end of the project. So I was the first MSc student. I looked the first two years of, of project. Um, after me is Cara. Um, and then there will be a third MSc student. Um, and obviously, we are all looking at different characteristics. I looked at mainly the establishment phase of the plants. Um, and then Cara and the following student will look at the fruiting characteristics of the plants. Um, <clears throat> all of the data that we uh, are collecting in terms of phenology as well as architecture and reproductive growth, it's all done in the background of uh, weather data. So we're collecting weather data with a tiny tag, taking that information and putting it into um, Cultiva, which is Provar's um, in-house application. Um, and then that is used to calculate chill units, which is Infratech chill units, Utah, as well as the dynamic model. 
And then we also have um, growing degree days, um, which is going to be obviously the heat uh, portion of the, of the, the weather. Um, so I'm busy finishing up with my MSc now, so there's no final conclusions, but um, if I can just share some of the things that I've noticed up until now. Um, we've measured a lot, a lot of characteristics, um, put them all through stats analysis. Um, for the first two years, uh, the trees came out of a cauldron, so for all intents and purposes, their chill was met. Um, and the pattern that I've noticed, there was lots of genotype by environment interaction, um, but if you investigate into that interaction, um, at least for the first year, a lot of it is still driven by genotype, um, which is to say that you're not going to get away from a poor performing genotype if you plant it in a different area. That's what I see so far. Um, the ranking or the relative ranking of the genotypes in comparison to one another stays relatively the same, although there will be a one or two genotypes here or there that interact specifically with a certain environment. Um, in the second year, I didn't mention, but we start adding uh, rest breaking. So half of the genotypes get rest breaking and half of them don't get rest breaking. That also allows us to see um, the effect of rest breaking. And there what I notice is that, as you would expect, um, it has a large influence on the um, flowering time and all sort of bud break characteristics, um, but not that much on the architecture side. So there's a lot of data being collected. Um, and um, yeah, we have to basically have a look at it, all of that, and, and hopefully we'll have some firm conclusions soon. I um, just want to give my acknowledgments, Provo, for managing the project, um, Stellenbosch University for being part of the MSc uh, journey, Hortgrove for funding, and then ARC just for the stats analysis. Thanks.